No, thank you very much for having me here today. Um, I'm here and I'd like to give you a little bit of an overview uh, about what's, uh, the What's Your Heritage project, why we did it, what we found out and uh, what we plan to do next. <clears throat> the project ran from November last year to March this year and many of you will have seen the promotional material about it or made your own personal contributions either to the survey or the workshops that we held all over Scotland. Um, the What's Your Heritage project was the first part of a commitment uh, from Historic Primate Scotland to review our historic environment policy statement. It's also the first ever informal exchange of ideas we've had with the people of Scotland about heritage and we use the feedback to directly drive policy change. The aims of the project were set out as above. For context, within Scotland, how we undertake our role is established in legislation and strategic national policy and how we undertake change is set out in Scottish planning policy. Historic Environment Scotland translates how this operates in our Historic Environment Policy Statement and various guidance and technical documents. This is derived from many decades of work inherited from our predecessor bodies. As a new organisation, we realised we had a once-in-a-generation chance to take a really fundamental look at our approaches to designation, change management and how Scotland's historic environment is looked after, recognised and valued for the 21st century. So why did we go about a review of policy in this way, <clears throat> rather than the more traditional route of drafting a new document and sending out a formal consultation? Well, as a new organisation, we wanted to demonstrate that we're open to new ways of working um, and to establish a compel compelling narrative and baseline information about what the people and communities of Scotland today think we ought to be doing to support the recognition and the management of our historic environment, rather than presuming we know what's best. To this end, we ask people which places and buildings are important to them, uh, what are the things that make them feel proud and have special meaning for their community. We ask which of Scotland's places, buildings and monuments should be designated, valued, acknowledged and celebrated. We asked about how change to designated sites and places should be managed and what sort of development is appropriate for these special places. We had around 2,000 responses to this survey. This represents a huge response for us. Again, for context, um, the traditional consultation routes where you draft something and ask people to comment generally get around 100 responses or fewer. So it's evidence that people really are invested in their heritage and history. You can see here some example of our impact and approach. Um, we had, for example, responses from all uh, local authority areas, so people all over the country. And our video about the Lauriston Bar in Glasgow, featured on my first slide, was watched over 40,500 times, which is by far our most frequently viewed online uh, video. The feedback that uh, we received demonstrated that there's widespread support for recognising special buildings and places, but that the processes around that, such as listing and scheduling, are seen as obscure and inaccessible. We also found that there's a lack of understanding about who does what in the planning system, and that HES is viewed as acting nationally, and not always on what matters at a local level. Recognising local history and local knowledge came out as extremely important in the responses. Overall, though, we found that, reassuringly, our knowledge um, and expertise is recognised, which is good. When people were asked directly in workshops all over the country what heritage means to them, local identity and community anchored all conversations. <laughs> Excuse me. People, stories, dialects, traditions are all linked to and create special meaning for the buildings and places the people of Scotland enjoy. Groups shared examples of hidden or lesser known features of the built environment in their local area and reflected on the importance of these traditions, both old and new. Which raises the question, when we designate, there's often a focus on the aesthetic or physical attributes and characteristics of a site, feature or building, although our regimes do allow for historical association to be taken into account. But it is often the ephemeral associated with such assets that engage others in its past and the relationship to it that they have that is consider considered most <laughs> significant. From these results we have a challenge to respond to this, but it also affords us uh, the opportunity to enhance the national record 
Building on successes of projects like Scotland's urban past, for example, and how we value and record our environment. And indeed, when asked to finish the sentence, my heritage is, the three main responses we got were past places and traditions. Again, the strong theme of recognising local knowledge sits alongside a large number of people that would like to see a locally run designation system in their area. <laughs> of the 89% that wanted this, an impressive 70% wanted to be actively involved. The majority of contributors felt that the historic environment is something that you inherit and you have a responsibility to look after for the next generation to enjoy. But overwhelmingly, a pragmatic, a pr pragmatic approach to managing change is favoured, with 78% feeling that some change to historic places is acceptable. Participants explained that ensuring that communities feel informed, empowered and included in decision making at a local level is very important. We need to consider how we will address this in our policy and practice. The current view of planning in Scotland, for example, is wrestling with the same issues on how to respond to this need and how better to engage with communities, enabling them to effectively engage in decisions about the places they work and live in. This runs in parallel with the current Scottish Government agenda on empowering communities. We also asked some specific questions about designation and change. As an example, we asked specifically about Barnhill Cottage on Jura, shown here where George Orwell wrote 1984. 95% of people thought that the fact that George Orwell wrote the novel at his house meant it should be recognised. 83% would like to see it recognised by a plaque, and 70 would like to see it recorded in our digital archive. What's interesting, though, is that people were split, with 50% wanting to see it listed in, in the, sort of the traditional sense. We're currently thinking about the consequences of listing and what change management consequences are. When we list a building, it means that the physical alterations with potential to impact on the character and appearance need listed building consent. You may be familiar with this process. So a hypothetical scenario would be if we listed Barnhill Cottage, should the owner need listed building consent to alter it if it isn't the physical fabric that matters in this case? Is there a way to build in what change means for the tangible elements that contribute to the significance of buildings and sites without placing bureaucratic burdens on owners? These are questions that we'll need to think about over the coming months as we consider our future approach to designation and what that means for change management in the historic environment. It was reassuring to find that there is widespread acceptance to change, that change to buildings is inevitable to keep them alive. We were told that this should be informed by a need and or the proposed use that the existing buildings should be adapted in sympathy with the local environment. However, we currently have a system where only the assets that the national body identifies as significant come under scrutiny. How do we build in thinking about the historic environment more broadly, taking into account community views in all decisions about change in Scotland? It's worth remembering that when we designate assets in the historic environment, it does not protect them from loss, damage or inappropriate change. It's people that protect them. What designation does do, however, is introduce a process for when change is proposed that forces, if you will, decision makers, owners and other agents of change to stop and think. Stop and think about what they have, why it's important and how that should inform change management, change or an approach to loss. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. <coughs> We've analysed the responses from the survey to draw out the potential policy implications for us. Here you can see some more of the results. There were some surprises, uh, for such as, for example, that both natural and built heritage were uh, both seen as equally important. Um, when it comes to involving communities and decisions that affect them and their places, we were unsurprised to hear that people think current consultations within the system are simply seen as tick box exercise. As already mentioned, responders and participants saw local knowledge as key and wanted it to be used to enrich decision making. They also told us that protecting, recording and promoting intangible heritage link with buildings and places is very important to them. Examples cited range from the common riding in the borders to local dialect. 
as we are increasingly called on to recognise at the national level events and objects that do not fall so neatly within the general categories of building or monument, is it time to revisit how we mark these assets, perhaps? I'm stealing this slide. Uh, oh, I've lost a slide. Hmm. Anyway, carry on. Sorry, about that. there was a slide there, um, but uh, I can't remember what was on it, so you just have to imagine. Um, <laughs> we live in a country where our government asks us to think twice before disposing of plastic carrier bags. But you can demolish a building or remove an asset if Historic Environment Scotland hasn't drawn a line around it on a map. How can we build in the same need to stop and think for all assets, be they significant nationally or locally, or both? So what might this mean for where we take Historic Environment Scotland's policy statement and the processes for designation and change management, all big things? You can see here some of the things that have come out of it. And whilst there are lots of technical things we need to do, um, to get it right, we know that we have to get better at communicating to the people of Scotland and beyond what we and what others working in the historic environment do, how we do it and what it means for them. You can see here some of the opportunities and challenges that face us. We, the Historic Environment of Scotland, need to continue to demonstrate that what we do matters to the people of Scotland, but we also need to, but do we also need to ensure that what, uh, the power to identify what is significant doesn't just rest with us at a national level. We can give people a say in what we do, but we can also lead the debate on how what communities value and consider significant to them at a local level is recognised, celebrated and managed for future generations. Opening up conversations with people beyond those who are considered experts and to embrace the expertise of local people will be a challenge, but we need to do this to respond to what people have told us they want through the What's Your Heritage project. <coughs> so, next steps. Um, throughout November, and we've already had a few, we're meeting uh, with the sector and local authorities to consult and present and discuss the findings of What's Your Heritage, working towards a revised historic environment policy for HES by late 2018. It might seem like a long time, but it isn't. But of course, we will be keeping everybody informed about how their input has changed what we do and keeping the conversation going throughout this process. If you would like more information about the project and what the policy review means, have any ideas or would like to be involved in some way, please do get in touch. I'm afraid I'm going to stop talking now because I am getting very, very creepy. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>